Hi everyone, welcome to GemChem. This is the video lecture of atomic structure part 4. Here we will learn the atomic spectra as understood from Bohr and Sommerfeld concept, energy expression of Sommerfeld considering mass variation, relativistic kinetic energy and Bohr's correspondence principle. If you have not seen the previous videos of atomic structure, then please do watch it. It will be helpful. I will give the link in the description box. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Now let us start today's video. Now in the spectra we know that transitions takes place to form the series Paschen, Bummer, Lyman we have already observed in previous videos. So what is the selection rule for the transition to take place? The selection rule for the transition to take place in case of Bohr is plus minus 1 so that there is a transition between two levels with a difference of plus minus 1 for the value of n. Whereas in case of Sommerfeld, we have seen a new quantum number arising known as azimuthal quantum number. So difference between the two states for transition to take place must be plus minus 1 for the azimuthal quantum number. So we have to understand these things. Now let us see the spectra. Now, atomic spectra for Bohr concept, suppose we take for our Baumer line, first Baumer line, transition takes place from 3 to 2. Okay, so we observe this transition, but in case of Sommerfeld concept, there is two quantum numbers, n and n phi. So, we get divided lines. This n equal to 2 is divided into two lines with multiplicity of 2. So, we get n phi equal to 2 and 1 and in case of n equal to 3 we get 3 lines where 1 2 3 are the 3 multiple lines present for the level of n equal to 3. Now we observe that a transition taking place from n phi equal to 1 to n phi equal to 2 is correct transition whereas if it takes place from n phi equal to 1 to n phi equal to 1 it is wrong because the difference in the value of the n phi is becoming 0. So, only allowed value is plus minus 1. Similarly, for the next one we see n phi equal to 2 to n phi equal to 2 is not occurring whereas n phi equal to 2 to n phi equal to 1 is occurring because the difference is plus minus 1. In this case specifically it is 1. And the last one we see that n phi equal to 3 that is transition is taking place from n phi equal to 3 of n equal to 3 to n phi equal to 2. So, difference between these two are also plus minus 1. So, here specifically it is 1. Whereas for n phi equal to 3 to n phi equal to 1, the difference becomes 2. So, it is not allowed. So, this is basically the atomic spectra what is understood from Bohr concept as well as Sommerfeld concept. We have already seen that the Bohr concept has the drawback of seeing multiple lines but not being able to explain it. But Sommerfeld is able to explain the concept of multiple lines. Now we will derive the Sommerfeld, not exactly derive, but we will get the expression of Sommerfeld energy considering the variation of mass of electron. Now see, we have already seen that the total energy of an electron in the principal quantum number orbit of principal quantum number to be this for Bohr and when we substituted the Sommerfeld uh, condition we got this expression that is by putting the value of n as n phi plus nr this expression right. So, this implies that electron energy would be same in any orbit of the principal quantum number n whatever be the electricity. Whereas at this point Sommerfeld considered the variation of mass of electron during its motion in an elliptical orbit and showed that energy of electron would actually be different for different values of n phi. For maintaining a balance with varying electrostatic force with varying distance from nucleus an electron moving in an elliptical orbit has to change its velocity continuously. Suppose velocity being the greatest when the electron is closest to the nucleus in the ellipse while it decreases gradually as electron shifts away from nucleus. Hence according to the theory of relativity this continuously changing velocity of electron 
encircling a nucleus has an influence on mass of nucleus which also changes according to this relation. So the mass changes according to this relation m equals to m0 root over 1 minus v square by c square. Here m0 is the rest mass of an electron and m is mass of electron at different points of an elliptical path. v is the velocity at that point and c equals to the velocity of light. Okay, now we will see considering this relativistic correction, Sommerfeld showed that this relativistic variation of mass of electron is significant and that it causes slight difference in energy of electron in orbits of varying ellipticity and he suggested that a new relation should be proposed for energy of an electron. Let us see the new expression. The new expression was this one that is E equals to minus 2 pi square z square e to the power 4 m by n square h square. This was also previously seen whereas the addition is this part 1 plus alpha square z square by n square in bracket n by n phi minus 3 by 4. On further evaluation we get this part that is minus 2 pi square z square e to the power 4 m by n square h square and this one is simplified so 1 plus alpha square z square by n 1 by n phi minus 3 by 4 n this expression should be remembered the derivation is not required in this point of time now what is the value of alpha the value of alpha is 2 pi e square by ch and its value is approximately 1 by 137. Now alpha is known as fine structure constant. Alpha is known as fine structure constant. This should be remembered and the value should be also remembered. Now we observe an important thing that is this relativistic variation of mass has further significance that is each time electron passes close to the nucleus the equilibrium force between electron and nucleus is slightly perturbed and the major axis of the ellipse shifts slightly that is undergrowth precision the result is that each time this happens electron that is electron passes closest to the nucleus the very path of electron itself shifts in a circular manner keeping the nuclei at the foci. This resulting movement is like a rotating top and this is the movement. This is known as rosette path or rosette motion. This is like a rotating top. It we have seen spinning top. It looks like that motion. Okay. Now we will come to relativistic kinetic energy. We will derive how relativistic kinetic energy is derived. Now see the relativistic energy expression has both rest mass energy and the kinetic energy of particle in motion that is the relativistic energy includes both rest mass and kinetic energy of particle. So the kinetic energy of a particle with very high velocity is given by this expression that is mc square minus m0 c square this is the rest mass energy that is m0 c square this part is the rest mass energy. Now for low velocities V by C that is the one here present in the previous cases of we have seen the mass formula right here let us recollect this mass formula has V by C so we are taking this part. Now see for low velocities this will be much much less than 1 right. So when much much less than 1 we can consider this to be as half m0 v square we know the formula for kinetic energy we have taken this so kinetic energy will be equal to this one okay m0 c square and this value is put here m value is put here just here minus 1 so we get this we know the formula for series expansion so we just expand this for this part that is root over 1 minus v square by c square on expanding we get this value okay this series. So we ignore these terms when the v by c is much much less but we can't ignore these terms when it is not much less. So kinetic energy will be this much that is 
k e equals to half m0 v square plus 3 by 8 m0 v to the power 4 c square and goes on. The higher power ignored as v is much much less than c. So, we get this term half m0 v square. Whereas, if v value not very small, higher powers of v should not be neglected. This is important. Now, if suppose v should not be neglected, then the above expression clearly seen. This above expression is clearly seen that it depicts as to how v e of the particle influences a kinetic energy for it would be having a finite contribution over and above half m0 v square. This is important. Now, we will come to Bohr's correspondence theory or Bohr's correspondence principle. Now, correspondence principle, what it demands? It demands that classical physics and quantum physics are able to provide the same answer when the system becomes very large. Whereas, the condition under which quantum and classical physics agrees are referred to as correspondence limit or classical limit. Therefore, it is one of the tool for selecting quantum theories corresponding to reality and to be able to reproduce classical mechanics in correspondence limit. That is in physics correspondence principle states that behavior of a system described by theory of quantum mechanics reproduces classical mechanics in limit of large quantum numbers. In other words, it suggests that large orbits that is having large quantum number the calculations made from quantum mechanics must agree with classical calculations. This was first formulated by Bohr and then he previously made use of it in 1913 also before discovering it. So, though the wave numbers are spectral lines given by Bohr's theory, no interference regarding the nature and intensity of life could be made from it. Bohr therefore established a principle linking classical theory and quantum theory which enabled him to make use of result of classical theory in quantum mechanics and vice versa. So, this principle states that for large quantum numbers the behavior of atom tends to be such which is expected for classical from classical theory. Okay. Now, accordingly for very large values of n the frequency of emitted radiation that is the frequency of emitted radiation is nearly same as the orbital frequency of electron in the orbit. So, basically this line is the outcome of the Bohr's correspondence principle. So, we will derive this outcome. What is the outcome of Bohr's correspondence principle? That is direct outcome of Bohr's correspondence principle will be derived. So, let us see. Now, the time taken, suppose we take a circular orbit, ok. Now, this is the nucleus, this is the electron. Now, the time taken by the electron to revolve around this orbit is 2 pi r, that is the circumference divided by the velocity of the electron, that is 2 pi r by v. Now, frequency of electron rotating in that orbit will be just the opposite, that is the 1 by t, that is f equals to v by 2 pi r. Now, we know that m v r equals to n h by 2 pi from Bohr's principle of quantization. Now, we square the terms and we get this one m square v square r square equals to n square h square by 4 pi square. Now, we also know that m v square by r equals to z square by r square. We divide 1 by 2 and we obtain the expression as this one m r equals to n square h square by 4 pi square z square. Now, r here is obtained from this expression and this is the 3 equation. Now, we put the value of r in the equation m v r equals to n h by 2 pi and we obtain the expression for v that is 2 pi z e square by n h. This is the value of v obtained. Now, we put both the values of r and v in the equation of this one that is the frequency and we obtain the value of frequency as 4 pi square m z square e to the power 4 n cube h cube already obtained. So, this is the frequency of an electron moving in an orbital having principal quantum number. Okay. Now, we have already obtained the frequency. Now, we will obtain the energy. Let us see. This is the classical radiation law frequency of electron moving in an orbit having principal quantum number n. The frequency emitted are integer multiples of 1 by t. Now, if we know the energy 
of electron changing orbits from a level n plus 1 to n. We have already seen while deriving the Rydberg constant how to do it. So please do watch it if you don't understand. You will definitely understand from atomic structure part 1 and part 2. So link I will give it in the description box. Now E equals to 2 pi square z square e to the power 4 m by n square h square minus 2 pi square z square e to the power 4 m by n plus 1 whole square h square. Now on simplifying this one we obtain this expression. This is just doing the LCM and then squaring this n plus 1 whole square. We get this expression. Now when quantum numbers are very large or high n is large then n plus 1 becomes n and 2n plus 1 becomes 2n. So we obtain this expression that is this is substituted by 2n and this is substituted by only n. So we get expression of this. Now see from this energy we also get another frequency that is wave number. We get the wave number right. So putting this h equals to h nu we know right. So e equals to h nu we substitute here and we get this expression and the wave number is also this one. So we see that frequency of electron rotating in an orbit determined classically is frequency of emission of same electron when it changes its orbit from higher to lower quantum number calculated on basics of quantum mechanics. This is the direct outcome of Bohr's correspondence principle. Now this is a simple question try to answer predict the atomic spectra that will be obtained as first line of Pastian series for both Bohr's concept and Sommerfeld concept. Now thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and do not forget to like, share. Thank you.